Shalom, shalom, hello to everyone. Um, whether you are a member of Ethan Fellowship or whether you are a person that was able to um, be graced um, and have the opportunity to watch this video, grace and peace to you. May the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ be upon you. May you be blessed. May everything that you touch be multiplied in Jesus' name. Um, whoever's watching this, you are a blessing. Um, Jesus loves you. Repent from your sins. Turn away from your wicked ways and turn to Jesus. Turn to the cross because he loves you and he cares for you. Um, today, I wanted to do a uh, preaching today. And the topic was uh, the joy of the Lord. Um, you know, the Bible tells us that the joy of the Lord is our strength. And uh, I just wanted to elaborate a bit on that. And uh, that the scripture of focus we're going to be focusing on is uh, Genesis 39. And if you're not familiar with this chapter, um, it talks a lot about Joseph, who was in the prison. And just showing how he was able to show contentment and how he was able to show strength, even in the midst of so much adversity from being sold to his brothers to finding favor with the king at the time and falling out of favor uh, with the king and being put in prison and all these different things. And, you know, we're going to elaborate on a lot of these different things. Um, and just talk about the joy of the Lord. What, is, what does joy mean biblically? And what does joy also look to us? Look at what does joy also look from a carnal standpoint, right? Because I don't think a lot of people have a different interpretation of what joy is supposed to be, right? So without further ado, I want to start with a prayer and we'll get this started. Lord, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your grace, for your mercy. We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity that, that you've given us, Lord. The Bible says, Lord, when there are two or three gathered in your name, you are there in the midst. So we just pray, Holy Spirit, that your presence will be here, Lord, that you will guide us, that you will protect us, that you will minister to us. May you give us, Father, the understandings of what is being taught. May you strengthen us in our resolve, Lord. Help us to understand your word, for the word says that your word is like a lamp to my feet. So, Father, may your word be the light that guides us in this dark world, Lord. We ask you, Lord, Holy Spirit, that these words will not depart from our mouth, and will stay sealed in our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So before we begin, I have a couple of uh, scriptures and notes that I had written down um, in my notes um, pertaining to the joy of the Lord, uh, the joy of the Lord. Now, when I had gone online, I had search up some different quotes and definitions about you know what the word joy really means. And I found a couple ones, uh, two were written by someone who was anonymous. To have joy in your heart, one must know how to appreciate the small things in life. The second writer has said, find joy in the journey. And my final quote um, from a man named David Standiel Rast, he had said, joy, the kind of happiness that doesn't depend on what happens. So when I was looking at these quotes, I tried to compare it in the best way, you know, to see which person or group of people had, you know, exhibited this type of joy that wasn't dependent on their circumstances. Now we see um, in Philippians 4.13, we see when Paul is writing from prison and saying, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Right. He's able to show contentment um, even in his situation. Right. And let's, let's go. Let's go down these quotes before we really get into it and see what is really being said here. To have joy in your heart, one must know how to preach the small things in life. How often do we negate the small things in our lives? Right. How often do we forget that being alive is a blessing? Having food on the table is a blessing. Being able to read the word of God is a blessing. Be, being able to wake up every day and have a bed is a blessing, right? Finding joy in the journey. A lot of us are going on a journey that God has put us on, right? God has put us all on a journey and everyone's journey is different. Not everyone's journey is the same. So we have to learn to find joy in the journey, right? Finding joy in the journey. We see many times in the Bible, even when we get to Joseph, we see how Joseph was on a journey. Joseph went through a lot, right? Went through so many different things, but the end result, God was still with him. 
right? Joseph had found prison. Joseph had the favor of God over him even when he was in the prison, right? So this is something that I think we have to really understand because the Bible says what? That the enemy came to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And one of the things he tries to steal from you is your joy. Don't let the enemy steal from you. Don't let the enemy steal your joy from you, right? The Bible says, for the spirit of heaven is put on the garment of praise. Our joy is so important. Enjoy the kind of happiness that doesn't depend on what happens, right? Is your joy dependent on what happens, meaning circumstantial, where a lot of people's joy is based on what happens, right? We want that kind of joy. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Now, it does not mean that every situation you're going to be encountering in life is going to always seem joyous. But to find joy in those situations will help you to overcome many of the different arsenals of attack the enemy may place upon you. Depression, right? I always tell people the goal of depression, number one, is to keep you silent, right? The goal of depression is to keep someone silent. And what happens when a praying Christian is depressed, he is silent, meaning he is no longer praying. Your joy has been taken from you. This is how the enemy steals our joy and he's able to steal our prayers, which is the one weapon that we use to overcome the enemy. Now, I wrote down some notes here and I said, what does carnal joy look like? I wrote here circumstantial. Many times our joy and situations that we are faced with is circumstantial. What is happening in our life? Does it benefit me? Is it going in my direction? What am I seeing? Number two, carnal joy is based on receiving, not giving. Many of us are focused so much on what can I have? What can I get? What can I do for me? What can others do for me? Instead of saying, what can I do for others? Myself personally, I've had many people in my life bless me with you know, many different things. But one thing I understood and one thing that brought me the most joy was actually giving to others, seeing that I was able to change another person's life. It's not necessarily through giving something materialistic, but also even just my words, speaking life into people is something so important. Carnal joy also has no true foundation, right? When our foundation is rooted in Christ, we are able to not be shaken, right? We're able to not be shaken. The Bible says, for thou, O Lord, are the shield for me, my glory, the lifter up of my head. God is the lifter up of our head. He is the shield for us, right? Christ is, you guys heard that song, Christ is my firm foundation. He is our firm foundation. And without that foundation, right, it's like a house built on sand, right? You want a house built on rock. Carnal joy is also temporal, meaning subject change, right? Meaning at any given moment, your joy can change because it's temporary. Carnal joy can also be seen as self-centered. Me, 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 me. Self-righteous. Me, 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 me. I'm this. I'm that. I'm this. You're always looking for attention. You're always looking for compliments. You're always looking for someone to do something for you rather than you do something for someone else. The Bible says, no greater love than this, than a man, man shall lay down his life for his friends. This is what Jesus did. He laid down his life for us. Right? That while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Right? And we are saved by faith, right? Through grace, saved by grace through faith. And it is not a gift, right? It is a gift, sorry, it is a gift so that no man can boast, right? This is what Jesus has given us. Carnal joy is also self serving, it's also double minded, right? These are some points I had written down here. So, when I talked about carnal joy being temporary, I want to bring us to the book of Job. I want to bring us to the book of Job. And we see here in the book of Job, carnal joy is temporary because it is based in self-centeredness. By the lifestyles of the average unconverted person, we can easily see that they live their lives according to the saying, ignorance is bliss. How often have we heard that people saying, ignorance is bliss? But God tells his people not to rejoice like the world. It is better to have sorrow and humility than joy and pride. I want you, I want to read that again. It is better to have sorrow and humility than joy and pride. And I got that quote from Martin G. Collins. And I'm going to read something to you guys here quick. And I had this written down. It's in the book of Job, Job chapter 20, verses 5. That the 
triumphing of the wicked is short and the joy of the hypocrite is but for a moment, right? We have to understand here, guys, that in many times in our lives, we are faced with so many different circumstances. Job, right? Job was faced with one of the most brutal, quick, you know, devastating things, losing his money, losing his family, losing his cattle, everything, right? So many things have happened, but yet Job never cursed God with his lips. Job had spoken up and cursed the day he was born and even was lamenting, right? And a lot of things he was saying. And we see here how even in Job's, Job's hardship, him praying for his friends, you know, that his friends were even blessed and saved because of Job, because of Job's perseverance. What am I trying to say to you guys? Even in the circumstances that we are going through, God can use our circumstance to be an encouragement to others. Like I always tell you guys, you know, losing my mother. I never could relate to people that had lost someone that close to them. But when it finally happened to me and other people had seen how I was able to deal with it, you know, it, I, I've gotten a lot of messages from people saying, man, your strength, your, your resolve, right? You know, everything that you went through and being able to still see you push on and keep forward, right? And, you know, I tell people, man, I have joy. The joy of the Lord is my strength. And not only that, understanding that my mom was a woman that was saved and loved Jesus, understanding that she is in a better place and she is blessed, right? It's just something that I also really, really understand and something that helps me to sleep at night. Now, I had gone online uh, and searched up some biblical scriptures on joy, right? And I have written down here, prayer is calling for backup and laying a hold of the Lord's willingness to help us. Right? I talked last week about posture, the importance of posture, positioning yourself, right? And Jeremiah 29, 11 says here, for I know the plans and thoughts that I have for you, says the Lord, plans for peace and well-being and not for disaster to give you a future and hope. Prayer helps us remember that we are not in the fight alone. We are not in this fight alone and allows us to be hopeful for divine intervention as we navigate life's difficulties, right? This is the joy that I have, that God is saying to me in Jeremiah 29, 11, that he knows that the plans that he has for us, right? Not a plan for evil, but a future and a hope, right? Christ is the hope of my salvation. So having that belief and understanding, the Bible says, without faith, no man can please God. If we do not have faith in God, how can we please God? How can we have joy in what God is doing if we do not have faith first in God? Believing what he said over my life, believing that I am above and not beneath, believing that I am highly favored, believing that I am the head and not the tail, believing that I will be blessed, right? Faith, faith. And what does the Bible say? Faith comes by hearing and hearing what? the word of God. This is why the word of God is so important because through the word of God, we are able to obtain faith, which is also able to strengthen us and allow us to experience God's joy within us. Hebrew eleven six says, without faith, like I said earlier, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. We have to understand here, guys, right? When we are coming to God, when we are coming to him in prayer, a lot of times we come in the form of a lament, you know, lamenting and, and, and coming with so much pain and sorrow. And sometimes I ask myself when I'm coming before God and I'm crying or whatever, I say, man, do we really understand the God that we are serving, right? That he is able to do anything that we ask of him within his will. If it is in his will, sorry. Right? And it says here, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists. And not only that he exists, but that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. In another, in another saying, diligently seek him. Therefore, it pleases God for his people to seek him for help and direction for their lives. We're talking about the joy of the Lord here is our strength. So if we come to God 
and we believe that he exists and also believe that he rewards those who seek him, we will understand that nothing in our lives that we are going to, nothing is too hard for God. Nothing is impossible for God because through our faith, we understand that he will reward us, right? So that should also help with your joy. Exodus chapter 14, verse 14. The Lord shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. The Lord shall fight for you, you shall hold your peace. Oftentimes, we are faced with many different circumstances in life. We are faced with battles. We're faced with bills. We're faced with so many things that come up, uh, sicknesses in our family, whatever the case is. But God is telling us, peace, be still. Hold your peace. The Lord shall fight for you. When you understand this, when you understand that we have an advocate that sits at the right hand of our father interceding and praying for us, and that he is saying, I shall fight for you and I shall go before you and to hold our peace. God is telling us the battle's already been won. You know, the battle is his, but the victory is us, is ours. But ultimately the victory belongs to Jesus. And he's telling us that he will fight for us. Joy, joy. Have joy knowing that your father is going and fighting for you. He has gone before you to fight for you. Just hold your peace and stay in prayer. Psalms 23. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Now, I want to speak on something. You know, we talk about the joy of the Lord is our strength. The prerequisite to having the joy of the Lord is to believe in God first, to seek him, right? Because we said earlier, up, what did the Bible say? The Bible says, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists, he was 11, 6, that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him, right? Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Every day our lives, God's goodness and mercy follows us. It is not anything we have to chase after. Instead, it follows us as believers. It doesn't stay here. It follows us as people. It follows us as believers, right? Like I said, the prerequisite to receiving the joy of the Lord is to believe first in the Lord, right? Believing first. Faith is so important, guys. Psalms 30, and I used to... Pray the scripture all the time. Weeping may stay for the night, but rejoicing comes in the morning. In uh, New King James Version, it says here, weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Joy cometh in the morning. Let me tell you guys something. The Bible tells us for the things in which we are seeing are temporal, meaning subject to change. Whatever you're currently going through, whatever you're facing, understand it has an expiry date. Our lives here on earth has an expiring date. And Psalms 35 tells us, weeping may stay for the night, but joy comes in the morning. What does this mean, right? If we're looking at it from a broad scale, this is simply saying that whatever you're going through, it is not going to stay there forever, right? I had written down here, dark days don't last. Many say it is darkest before a new day. However, midnight is the darkest hour and the start of a new day. So we must have faith in the darkest hour that the sun will rise and joy is on the horizon. Expectation. Joy is on the horizon. We must believe that. Now I want to get into Philippians 4.13 when we're talking about Paul in the prison. And we're going to stop in verse 10. But I rejoiced in the Lord greatly that now at last you care for me as flourished again, though you surely did care, but you lacked opportunity. Not that I speak in regard to need, for I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. I know how to be abased and I know how to be, I know how to abound. Everywhere, and in all things I have learned both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I have written down here, 
the verse is often shortened to, I can do all things. But is that what Paul is really saying here? Is he telling us to believe in ourselves or to believe that Christ empowers us to do whatever we set our minds to? No. I'll tell you. <laughs> the verse is honestly so misused because many Christians interpret all things as anything. I've done the same. I used to use it, you know, with my basketball quotes and everything. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do all things, right? Not all the things Paul has talked about. You know, it's not a blanket endorsement that God will support anything we set out to do and empower us to do, whatever impossible things we can imagine. But it is an, it is an assurance that we can do whatever God calls us to do, not whatever we decide to do. This isn't a biblical exhortation. You can stamp on whatever goals you have professionally, personally, or even physically. It's an encouragement that God can give you the strength to be content no matter what. Understanding that I am called, understanding that God has put me in this position, that God has opened this door. And the most important thing is God can open the door for you. God can set up the room. We have to walk through that door. We have to walk into that room. And he's there to hold, a, to hold our hand throughout the entire journey. The journey towards the door might be longer for others, but through that journey, God knows what he's doing. He's building us up. He's creating endurance with us, right? Spiritual strength, spiritual growth, right? Understanding that whatever situation we are in, God is working it for our good, which leads me to my last scripture. Romans chapter 8, verse 28. And we know that all things, not some things, all things work together for good to those who love God and to those who are called according to his purpose, joy. And we know that all things work together for the good to those who love God and to those who are called according to his purpose. So God is telling us we know all things work together. For what? For the good of those who love God, when who are called according to his what? Purpose. I had written down here how to find joy in circumstances. Number one, first, verify if it is in fact, it is God who you serve and who you love. Number two, examine your life. Are you living in habitual sin? Now, a lot of times, you know, when we sin, when we fall into temptation or lust or depression or any of these other, you know, symptoms of, you know, demonic oppression that come into our lives, the main purpose of it is to steal our joy. When the enemy steals our joy, he's able to steal our prayer life. When he steals our prayer life, he can steal the power and the promises in which God has placed within us. And that's this is what the enemy tries to do to avoid the destinies of many people, right? And if you allow these things to overcome you, you'll be defeated. But it said, all things work together for those who love God. So if you are faced with storms in your life, first, ask yourself, do I love the Lord? If the answer is yes, find rest, my friends. Find rest because the joy of the Lord is our strength. And for those who love God, the Bible says that all things work together. Everything you are going through. You lost your job. It is working together for those who love God. You broke up in a relationship. It is working together for those who love God. You messed up or lost the game or didn't receive this contract or didn't get paid for this or whatever it is. It is working together for those who love God. That's the most important thing. The Bible tells us in the commandments, right? You shall love your God. You shall love your God with all your heart, mind, body, and soul. If you love God, you will love to do what is pleasing to him. You will have faith. How can you love someone that you don't believe in? Right? Joy. Joy. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Joy. Now I talked about Genesis 39. I'm talking a bit about uh, Joseph. And it says here, now Joseph had been taken down to Egypt. And Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, brought him from the Ishmaelites who had taken him down there. The Lord was with Joseph, even though Joseph 
was taken down to Egypt, the Bible says, the Lord was with him. He is always with us. He goes before us. He is behind us and everything, no matter what, all things work together. Joseph clearly of God. The Lord was with Joseph and he was a successful man. And he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. And his master saw that, saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord made all he did to prosper in his hand. Not only is God being with us a blessing to us, it is also a blessing to others. The Bible says what? Let your light shine before all um, man. That light is a light in which Christ has placed within us to be a blessing to others. We are, in fact, a living testimony to this dark world. The Bible says that the whole world lies in darkness. And his master saw that the Lord was with him, that the Lord made all he did to prosper in his hand. So Joseph found favor in his sight and served him. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Joseph being sold by his brothers, you would think that he would be angry and, and upset and things would happen. But because God was with him, like I said, when a storm is in your life, when you are facing something, first verify if God is with you in that storm. If he is with you in that storm, find rest. Peace be still, he said to the sea on the boat when the sea was rocking and the water was shifting and everything was happening. The disciples were so worried. And the Bible said that Jesus was sleeping on the boat, but he spoke to the water. He spoke to the water. And he can speak to your storm, but he has given us the power. The Bible says he's given us the authority, right? To be able to speak to our storms in the name of Jesus Christ. Joseph found favor in his sight. And then he made him seer of his house. And now that he had put under his authority, so it was from the time that he had made him overseer's house, and now that he had, the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. And the blessing of the Lord was on all that he had in the house and in the field. Thus he left all that he had in Joseph's hand, and he did not know what he had except for the bread which he ate. Wow. The Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. For your sake, for my sake, for Job's sake, those around us who don't even know God can be blessed. If you guys know anything about Egypt, there's a lot of witchcraft, a lot of wizardry just happened. We see in the Bible the story of Moses and, and the snake and the rod, right? Versus um, Janice and Jambres, the uh, 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 Pharaoh's wizards. We know wizardry was in Egypt at the time. We know how evil that environment was. But we are called to be a light in the darkness, my friends, not just a light in the light. It is easy to be a light in the light. But can you shine in the darkness? Can you be a blessing? Can people see Jesus through you? Joseph, because of his obedience, because of his love for God, he found favor in, an, in Potiphar's eyes. He found favor in Egypt. And because of the favor he had found, the Egyptians around Joseph were even blessed. I believe every time I take a flight, I tell God, God, I know that this flight will be blessed and favored because I am on it, because I am your son. And you tell me that all things work together for my good. So I know that this plane will land. Everyone will have a great flight because I am on this plane. That is the faith. The Bible says this is the confidence that we have when we come to him. There's nothing too hard for God. There's nothing too impossible for God. And I want to conclude there, guys. Joy, joy, joy. Are you struggling today with joy? Maybe you're struggling with addiction. Maybe, maybe you find it hard to wake up in the morning. Maybe you are. Maybe you don't. You look in the mirror and you don't recognize yourself. Maybe you're going through a heartbreak. Maybe you're suffering from something. I'm here to tell you, the joy of the Lord is your strength. 
Find joy in his words. Find strength in his words. Not only reading the words, but believing. This is the most important part. Believing that he is a rewarder of those who diligently and earnestly seek him. Do you seek the Lord? Do you spend time to pray? What does your environment look like? Me, a professional basketball player, I'm, I'm faced with so much different things that can easily throw me off. I got to take time to worship. I got to take time to pray. I got to take time to put on, you know, sermons and stuff like that to really refresh me. Right? It's easy when I'm in church. I don't have to do anything. When we're outside, we got to take that extra effort, an extra step. So God wants us to have joy because the joy of the Lord is our strength. And it's hard. Believe me, I know it's hard. I've, I've, I've seen it. Have I always been joyful? No, absolutely not. I will not say that. But one thing I will say to you guys is the only way you can find true joy and true happiness is through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That is the only way. He came. He healed, he saved, he loved, he washed feet, and he was killed. I don't like to say killed because he gave, him, he gave up his life. He gave up his life. The curse that followed sin, that was for me, that was for you. He took it when he bore it on the cross. And even before giving his last breath, he said, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they do. And every time I think of that word, of that, of that line, I think, wow. You know, the other day I, you know, yes, today actually, you know, there was a drunk outside and he was harassing us and everything. I, you know, I told him, get out of here or whatever. And then I sat down here and I said, man, that man has no idea what he's doing. He has no idea the kind of spirits that have taken root and bondage over him. Like, and I regret I should have prayed for him or something. In the moment, sometimes our carnal and our flesh takes over. But understanding that there are people fighting real battles and demons out there. And if the Christian true church of God does not rise up and stand up, there will be many casualties. So I just, I just wanted to remind you guys that joy is not circumstantial. Joy is not self-centered. It's not self-serving. It's not self-righteous. Joy is found in worship. Joy is found in God. Maybe you haven't talked to God in a while. Maybe you haven't taken time to pray. I encourage you tonight to go into your knees. Talk to him. He's our Father. The Bible says, our Father who art in heaven. He is our Father. Speak to Him. We are in relationship. This is this is not religion. This is relationship. And the more we understand that, the more we will be able to have open dialogue with our Father. I'm gonna pray for you guys before I conclude this. Lord, I pray, Lord, for those of God that may be struggling. Lord, Your Word says, oh God, that Your Word is lamp to my feet. But many of us struggle to read Your Word, Lord, because. The enemy has stolen our joy. Father, I pray for whoever is watching this, Lord, that your joy, oh God, will completely overflow, them, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray even now for those watching, oh God, and I stretch my hands to those. I pray, Father, now that your joy, the joy of the Lord will be their strength. Father, I pray for every weight to be lifted off of them in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, every spirit of depression, oh God, oppression, any spirits oppressing your people. Father, I pray in Jesus' name that you will deliver and set them free. Father, may every burden be lifted off. The Bible says to cast all our burdens unto you because you care for us. We pray this in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Love you guys. God bless you guys. And uh, um, yeah, the joy of the Lord is our strength. God bless.